Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Yusuf. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Vice President of the Supreme Judicial Council and President of the Court of Cassation, Council, Councillor Abdullah bin Hassan Bouaini in Atrafa Palace. Al Bouaini presented to His Royal Highness a report on the initiatives to further develop the work of the judiciary in Bahrain. His Royal Highness noted the importance of multilateral cooperation in order to advance the kingdom's development. He also highlighted the unwavering support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the kingdom's judicial authority. He noted that the further development of the justice system aims to reinforce the principle of fairness as a basic pillar for enhancing security and stability, which in hand contributes to the kingdom's comprehensive development. For his part, al Bahrainin expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his support, which contributes to strengthening the role played by the Supreme Judicial Council in guaranteeing the rule of law and protecting the rights and freedoms. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the new Board of Directors of the American Women's Association in Bahrain, headed by its President Amy Strobe at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the strength of Bahraini-U.S. partnership and the Kingdom's commitment to further strengthening the bilateral cooperation across all levels. His Royal Highness congratulated AWA's President and the newly elected Board of Directors who have been elected to represent 200 members and wish them success in achieving the Association's goals. His Royal Highness commended the role of the non-profit association in furthering relations across borders and in serving the local community for over five decades. For their part, the president and members of the board of directors of the AWA expressed their gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness and conveyed their commitment to continue serving the kingdom local community. The National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the Indian Ambassador of Bahrain Piyush Srivas Tava. His Highness affirmed that the historic and exceptional Bahraini Indian relations embody the support of His Majesty the King and the interests of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, stating that these links are heading towards further development and prosperity across various fields. His Highness and the Ambassador discussed topics of mutual interest, including bolstering bilateral ties. His Highness then wished the Ambassador further success. The Ambassador expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser for the warm reception and His Highness's interest in bolstering the ties between Bahrain and India and taking them towards broader horizons. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, congratulated His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and the representative of His Majesty the King for humanitarian work and youth affairs on Bahrain's achievement, represented by Bahrain Handball Federation President Ali Ishaqi, winning the position of Vice President of the Asian Handball Federation, and Bahrain Handball Federation winning the Best Asian Federation Award for 2017 to 2021 for the second consecutive time. His Highness expressed pride in the new achievements, noting that they are recorded in the Bahraini sports achievements. He said that Bahrain's win reflect the support of His Majesty the King, the keenness of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and the efforts of His Highness Sheikh Nasser to the Bahraini sports, which contributed to many achievements that raised the status of the kingdom globally. His Highness stressed that the achievement is an affirmation of Bahrain's distinguished administrative competencies. He congratulated the AHF president, wishing him further success. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, met with the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michelle Bachelet, as part of his visit to Geneva. During the meeting, they discussed bilateral cooperation in the fields of human rights protection and affirmed the importance of continuing and developing joint action to meet common aspirations and goals. They also reviewed the role of the High Commissioner in enhancing and protecting human rights at the international level and Bahrain's continuous efforts in the development of human rights system and implementation of His Majesty the King's directives. The oil minister, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, inaugurated the distribution ceremony of the 7th Leadership Excellence for Women Awards and Symposium. 
The event aimed to honor the leading women in the field of energy for their initiatives and the remarkable level they achieved. It also aims to improve the reality of women in the Middle East and the GCC countries in order to contribute in promoting the principle of equal opportunities. The minister praised the care of His Majesty the King towards Bahraini women and commended the role of the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, paying tribute to Her Royal Highness the Consort of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa for the efforts aimed to empower Bahraini women in all fields. He noted the achievements of Bahraini women in the oil, gas and energy sectors and added that honoring women during this annual event represents a uh, good opportunity to spread the culture of leadership excellence for women and encourage innovation and leadership. He congratulated the winners for their great quality achievements that directly contributed to the development strides in their countries in the oil industry. He praised the Forum Committee and the awards president Reem Al Ghanem for their tireless efforts, wishing all of them further success. The advisor of His Majesty the King for Media, Nabil al Hamar, said that today's transformations across the world are no longer purely military or political, but extend to the economy, society and media. Speaking on Arabs and the new regional and international transformations at Asila Forum, al Hamar said that despite the Arab world's internal wars, conflicts and repeated daily attacks on Arab countries, there are at the same time seeds for positive Arab transformations and signs of a breakthrough. In his speech, al Hamar recalled the most prominent stages through which the pan-Arab nationalist trend has passed since the beginning of the century until the present day. The advisor to His Majesty the King for Media, Nabil al Hamar, and the Secretary General of Asila Forum, former Moroccan Minister of Foreign Affairs Mohammed bin Isa, laid the foundation stone for the pioneering Bahraini Moroccan project, Bahrain Institute for Oriental Music, in the presence of Bahraini Ambassador to Morocco, Khalid al Salam. This project comes in appreciation of the distinguished brotherly ties between Bahrain and Morocco, under the leadership of His Majesty the King and His Majesty the Jordanian King, and in affirmation of the close historic cooperation between the two countries and various fields, the project aims to qualify young musicians by teaching the rules of music in general and oriental music in particular, including the origins and development of Arab and Moroccan music. The Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women, Hal Al Ansari, said that Bahrain has started transferring its approach of promoting gender balance to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The step was announced amid Saudi keen interest in promoting the status of women and enhancing their integration into public affairs and the labor market. The Saudi Institute of Public Administration has recently unveiled a plan to set a center for promoting gender balance in Saudi Arabia. Al Ansari made the statement during a forum which was held by the Gender Balance Center, an offset of the public Institute of Public Administration under the theme Bahrain's approach for women's advancement and gender balance. The two sides are set to sign a memorandum of understanding in this regard. The SCW delegation addressed the event shedding light on Bahrain's multi-phased approach of promoting the status of women and achieving gender balance. Al Ansari stressed the importance of cooperation to exchange expertise between the two countries to further integrate women into the reform and projects and enhance their contribution to development. The Kingdom of Bahrain has com condemned the launch of a drone by the terrorist Houthi militia towards Khamis Amshayt in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in a systematic terrorist act targeting civilians and facilities. In a statement, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs affirmed Bahrain's support for Saudi Arabia and all the measures it takes to protect its security, stability and territorial integrity, praising the vigilance of Saudi air defense forces which were able to intercept and destroy the missiles. It also called on the international community to take strict decisions to stop these heinous terrorist attacks. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,182,176 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,146,272 had taken the second, and 479,664 had taken the booster dose. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 316, with 41 recoveries and 15 registered new cases. Four of the new registered cases are expatriates, 10 are contacts of active cases, and one is travel-related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus.